أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين وخاتم النبيين وعلى آله المجاهدين وعلى أصحابه المتقين وعلى الصالحين من المؤمنين أما بعد Dear brothers, dear sisters, السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته And a blessed Jumu'ah to you and to yours We will continue this week with these ayat in Surah Al-Isra that have very pertinent and very eye-opening meanings that relate to one of the most important issues in the world today, if not the most important issue in the world today, around which there are different opinions and distant polarizations. I'm speaking specifically about the Zionist theft of a country, the Zionist dislocation of a population, and everything that is supportive and everything that is against this phenomenon. In the area that we stopped at the last time around said ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا The ayah begins with the word ثُمَّ ثُمَّ is an article is a word in the Arabic language that suggests or means a space of time. It's called harf tarahi, which means uh, it is connecting two events, a previous one and a following one. And there's a time distance between these two events. So the first event that we spoke about previously was فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ أُولَاهُمَا بَعَثْنَا عَلَيْكُمْ عِبَادًا لَنَا أُولِي بَأْسٍ شَدِيدٍ فَجَاسُوا خِلَالَ الدِّيَارِ وَكَانَ وَعْدًا مَفْعُولًا so this is the first uh, time that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is relaying to us about the worldwide mayhem traceable to Bani Israel. And we said and we explained that that first time around they were defeated in a sequence of encounters with the devout and committed and combat-ready Muslims. In al Medina, by Allah's Prophet, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him and his. In Khaybar, by Allah's Prophet, Al-Imam Ali, and the committed Muslims, there and in Al Quds by the committed Muslims during the reign of the second successor to Allah's Prophet Al Khalifa Umar ibn Al Khattab. This sequence of rolling back and defeating 
the lobby, the clout, the influence, the control of Bani Israel in the Arabian Peninsula and in the Levant, in the Holy Land South, and then the Holy Land North, these continuous uh, setbacks of Bani Israel were not forgotten. And so Bani Israel, not in the media, not in public, and not propagandized, they put together their potential through the Byzantines and through the Umawi rulers in Damascus to strike back at the committed Muslims who were the ones who defeated them. But those who defeated them in Al Medina and Al and Khaybar and Al Quds, most of them were gone. So the only one left were those who were opposed to the Umawis. In a sense, those who were indirectly opposed to Bani Israel and the Byzantines. So an alliance of convenience came into being among Bani Israel, the Byzantines, and Bani Umayya. So they struck back at the Muslims, the committed Muslims, in the tragic war of Karbala. Tragic in the immediate sense of the word, but of fulfillment in the future and distant time to come. So the as we, thumma here, to go back to the first word in the ayah, the word thumma is referring us to the time period. It is explaining to us the time period between the initial uh, first time around when Bani Israel were at the top of the world and the time period that we are in today, about 14 centuries, that thumma, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in this ayah, thumma radadina lakumul karrata alayhim wa amdadnaakum bi amwalin wa baneen wa ja'alnaakum akthara nafira. This ayah is descriptive of the position that Bani Israel is in today. ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ Now we rolled back the events in your favor, Bani Israel, against them. Them is we the Muslims who were described in the ayah preceding this one as عِبَادًا لَنَا ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ Can anyone deny that in today's world, Bani Israel is in a military and political and economic superior position compared to the military and political and economic inferior position that the Muslims are in? This ayah is a prophecy. It is foretelling, because this was revealed 14 centuries ago, around 14 centuries ago. And it is speaking about what is in today's world in the relationship between those who are committed to Allah and those who are not committed to Allah. ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ You see, Allah's social laws are at work. 
when Allah says, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is involved in the movement of history when Bani Israel gains power and when those who were committed to Allah lose power. These are due to Allah's sunan. These are due to Allah's social laws we are not we the muslims in the world we cannot be victorious against israel when we are violating the sunan of allah when we are not honoring our relationship with allah it can't happen this is not magic and this is not witchcraft. These are Allah's rules that take their course. ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ And we provided you, we supplied you, Bani Israel, with amwal, with wealth. Can anyone deny in today's world where the money is? The, the, uh, if anyone is tuned into evangelical and into rabbinical sources of information, there is a push to centralize a Zionist Jerusalem to become the power center of the world. وَأَمْدَدِنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِ In the United States, who's the head of the Federal Reserve? Someone who belongs to Bani Israel. In the United States, who's the head of the policies that pertain to what is called the Arab-Israeli conflict? Someone who belongs to Bani Israel. Who is the negotiator who went to, from the United States to Lebanon and to Israel to solve the dispute concerning the um, area in the, Mediterranean, in the Mediterranean Sea beneath which are probably hundreds of billions of dollars of natural resources, gas and petroleum. It was someone who belonged to Bani Israel. And more to the point, not only does he belong to Bani Israel, he served in the Israeli military. Who's the uh, president of Ukraine? Someone who belongs to Bani Israel. Who are the ambassadors from the United States? in key countries in the Muslim East, those who belong to Bani Israel, even the President of the United States, the one who's uh, losing his mental uh, coherence, he said, you don't have to be a Jew to be a Zionist. I mean, technically, officially, the person says he's a Catholic. So he's telling the crowd that is listening to him, sure, I'm a Catholic. I don't have to be a Jew to be one of you guys. What we are seeing playing out in today's world was playing out during the time in preparation for the Battle of Karbala. And I don't mean to um, uh, to injure anyone's um, inherited information about what happened in Karbala, but it's about time that Muslims, you know, think outside of the box, the traditionalist, and the atavistic, and the reactionary 
box that they are in and begin to see the world as it is. I think I can't repeat this enough. If you who are watching or listening, if you look at today's world and learn from the combined forces of Zionism and imperialism and how they are united when it comes to dealing with Islamic self-determination, then you will see that they are working in tandem when it comes to Islamic movements, Islamic parties, Islamic organizations, and Islamic persons. They are working hand in hand. It's been like this. That is why when you read the Quran, stop for a moment when you read the word, Ya Ahl al Kitab. Why does Allah? Azzawajal. Why does he in many ayat in the Quran put the Jews and the Christians by faith who are Zionists and imperialists by ideology and policies? Why does do these ayat in the Quran say Ya Ahl al Kitab? This is an area that we have we the readers of the Qur'an, being educated by Allah, learning from the seerah of the Prophet, this is why we have to begin to relate these meanings of these ayat to the real world. ثُمَّ أَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا and we have, Allah is saying to Bani Israel, and we have made you more mobilized. When we, and look, when we compare the mobilization on all fronts, even when it comes to the relay of information, maybe you've seen in the past months, in the past a uh, couple of years. Maybe you've seen the Secretary of State of the United States, who belongs to the Bani Israel crowd. You've seen him go and meet with Israeli officials in Al Quds, in Tel Aviv, in Washington. And because of the way information is packaged, when you lis listen to the news, or you listen to someone um, co commenting on these meetings, no one seems to get the impression that there's a conflict of interest here. There is a Yehudi representing the United States who's speaking to Yehudis representing Israel and the United States presents itself as being an even broker in this, uh, what they call Arab-Israeli conflict. Now, everyone's antennas would go up if the Secretary of State of the United States was a Muslim. And I don't mean one of these because right now the, the State Department in Washington has put one member on its team who deals with the Arab, what's, what they call the Arab-Israeli conflict, who has a Muslim family, he has a Muslim heritage, he has Islamic rituals, so they put him in that crowd. And they want you and me, who are not Quranically educated, they want us to believe that there is some fair-handedness here. In the meantime, they go on from day to day and from election to election, they go on killing innocent people in the Holy Land. Those who had the pulse in them to kill prophets, to crucify 
one of Allah's prophets and messengers will certainly do this to those who are Muslims. And that's what's happening in today's world. And look at the laxity when it comes to Muslims. Where is the mobilization? We are being, we are suffering from a thousand cuts in this world. Almost anywhere in the geography of Muslims, you look, you will see a population that is bleeding. No mobilization, no living up to our responsibilities, and no instructions whatsoever that are taken to heart and to the heartland of this extension of territories from Asia to Africa. Once again, ثُمَّ رَدَدْنَا لَكُمُ الْكَرَّةَ عَلَيْهِمْ وَأَمْدَدْنَاكُمْ بِأَمْوَالِ وَبَنِينَ The regenerative power, power that is part and parcel of the Zionist imperialist conglomeration. بِأَمْوَالٍ وَبَنِينَ وَجَعَلْنَاكُمْ أَكْثَرَ نَفِيرًا Exactly describes the world we are in today. And then the ayah that follows, إِنْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ أَحْسَنْتُمْ لِأَنفُسِكُمْ That being the case, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, if you do what is better, you do it for your own sake. وَإِنْ أَسَأْتُمْ فَلَهَا And if you do what is worse, you do it against your own selves. This is once again to draw our attention to the social laws that are equally up Allah's social laws. Just like we have physical laws in this world, no Muslim or Christian or Jew or anyone of any faith or ideology can tell the law of gravity, stop working. No one in the world, of whichever background they have, can, cannot tell the sun to stop rising or to stop, or to, if the moon to stop rotating around the earth. These are physical laws. In the same sense, we have social laws that take their course. And we have to identify these social laws so that we can work not against them, but with them because they represent the will of the Almighty, the Creator, the Ever-Present, the Ever, the Know-All, the See-All, the Hear-All, Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. In ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum. Wa in asa'tum falaha. Okay? He brings, ahsantum meaning you, Bani Israel, in, uh, specifically, but generally, all of you who are Allah's subjects and inferiors, all of humanity, in ahsantum, ahsantum li anfusikum, wa in asa'tum falaha. Now is the transition to fa'idha jaa wa'du al akhirah. When the final. Uh, rendezvous in this historical sequence of time and in the troublemaking, the global troublemaking of Bani Israel, when their final episode begins, فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعْدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ they will 
Who's they here? It is we, the Muslims. When we return to becoming ibadan lillah, the wording of it in the previous ayah, ibadan lana, when we recapture that relationship to Allah, meaning we specifically and exclusively belong to Allah. We don't belong to a race. We don't belong to a man-made ideology. We don't belong to a class, an economic, financial class of people. We, from beginning to end, we belong to Allah. When that happens, this is the second our it's going to happen. This is going to be our second encounter with Bani Israel. All of these, the 1948, 1956, 1967, 1973, all of these encounters, we were not involved in it. Who was involved in it? Uh, illegitimate governments, non-representative of Muslim populations who got involved in these wars and they lost. And they lost because Allah's Sunan dictate that they lose when they are not ibadan lana. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ When the second time comes to pass, when the final time comes to pass, the wujuh, the, the, the word wujuh in the Quran is the plural of wajh. Wajh simply, in the simple sense, or in the initial sense, means face. Liyasu'u wujuhakum means your, I mean, in the literal sense, in an undeveloped sense. They, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, they, ibadan lana, are going to tarnish your, Bani Israel's, face. In a more... Um, informed understanding of this phrase it is because the face is is the place is the area of identity if if it were not for our face and everything that is on our face our eyes our vocal cords uh, meaning our mouth our language Everything is in this area. So when Allah says, لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ Meaning, عِبَادًا lana, The committed combat subordinates of Allah, Jalla wa'ala, are going to tarnish your identity. Meaning, this whole ideology of Zionism, linked with imperialism is going to be done away with. فَإِذَا جَاءَ وَعَدُ الْآخِرَةِ لِيَسُوءُ وُجُوهَكُمْ وَلِيَدْخُلُوا الْمَسْجِدَ كَمَا دَخَلُوهُ أَوَّلَ مَرَّةِ And they, meaning the committed Muslims, ibadan lana, belonging only to Allah, will enter the masjid. They will enter the masjid. Meaning, which masjid here? Al Masjid Al Aqsa. And if we understand 
what is happening in the real world today. I know probably you haven't heard this before, but it is a supportive understanding of the ayah. Because al-masjid, remember at the beginning of the surah, Subhana alladhi asra bi abdihi layla min al-masjid al-harami ila al-masjid al-aqsa. So there is, in the, the fact that our dear Prophet went on an elevated night journey from Mecca to Al-Quds, Jerusalem, from Al-Masjid Al-Haram in Mecca to Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa in Al-Quds. So when Allah says, when the second, when the final time of many Israel's arrogance in world affairs will come to an end, Ibad and Lana will enter the masjid. He didn't say Al Masjid al Aqsa, he didn't say Al Masjid al Haram. Many Muslims, because the culmination of the conflict is military, their minds immediately go to Al Masjid al Aqsa. We will enter Al Masjid al Aqsa. But a more refined understanding would say we will enter Al Masjid al Haram also because that's been alienated from us the same way Al-Masjid Al-Aqsa has, but with different rituals. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a maturity of knowledge and a knowledge for maturity and guide us in our worldly affairs unto Him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Sallallahu ala Muhammadin wa ali Muhammad. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته